motion open. Second. All in favor? Aye. With that, it being December 17, 2020, uh, we can, 6.44, can we jump right in with the 6.45 public hearing, man? Henry, or you gotta wait a minute? Uh, 6.45, I believe. I've got 6.45 on my clock. On my clock yep, at 6.45. We're ready. Fantastic, with that, public hearing continuation. Proposed subdivision at 148 Peckham Road, Josh Arruda of Acquisitioned Mass Applicant, represented by John Romanelli of Zenith Land Surveyors Lakeville. This proposal is for a three lot subdivision on a single access street. Do we have, who do we got, Jamie or John tonight? We're both here. Good evening, guys. Oh, it's lucky both of us. <laughs> Dynamic duo today. Fantastic. Yeah. Lucky you. Yeah. Uh, uh, Mr. Chair, do you mind if we share our screen? Please do, sir. Thank you. All right. Um, I believe um, since the last meeting, uh, there was a, a site walk, um, which uh, the majority of the board members were in attendance, uh, the planner, Mr. Young, and uh, also Mr. Romanelli. Um, and you were able to walk the site, um, take a look at what has been constructed, um, and I believe give, uh, give some feedback um, as to any type of modification or changes that you, um, the board that felt that they uh, wanted to the plan. Um, since that time, what we've done is exactly what we said we'd do at the last meeting and that site visit, which is uh, make sure our waiver list is complete, um, put together the, uh, the plan itself, stating that it's clearly a private way of 50 feet in width, uh, clearly um, marked out and with bearings and distances and the areas. And we've also created uh, or added from the common driveway plan, an updated version of the layout plan uh, with profile underneath. So we show grading um, and the profile per uh, planning board suggestion at the last meeting. Um, on the definitive plan itself, uh, we've added in uh, bounds as well. Um, and um, one of the other comments that was brought up that we addressed also was we did uh, propose tying into water and have it brought in with a hydrant on site, which is shown. Um, other than that, uh, I think that we've, we've talked about just about everything here and uh, John and I are happy to try to answer any questions you might have. Gentlemen on the board, any questions? Or do we have to, you're gonna have to give us a set of waivers that you wanted, right, Jamie? That's correct. Yeah, we'll yeah, have. Can, oh, sorry. Can you go back to that plan that shows the waiver list on it? Yes, sir. I can. The waivers are, are right here. I'll zoom in. Um, so on this plan itself, uh, we don't have the names of the abutters. We have the map and blocks, uh, block and lot on each one. Um, in the regulations, they ask for soil uh, holes to be dug along the roadway to determine water table and material. In our case, the, the roadway is already constructed. Um, they also ask for um, during the planning board process that the center line be staked out and maintained during until approval. Um, we're already constructed, so um, it'd be pointless to kind of put in the stakes at this point. Um, at, the, at the intersection of the roads, um, it talks about having a 30 foot radius. Um, we're providing a 20 foot. Oh, strong. Um, vertical curves, at least hundred feet long. Um, we're, st we're staying with the same profile since the road is built. Um, the grades uh, between uh, three quarters of a percent and 7%. Um, the steepest grade that we have is 8%, which was in uh, accordance with the common driveway regulations. So we're asking to be able to go up to 8%. Um, also, we're super elevating the road at a certain point, so the 0.75% the would, uh, would apply possibly from left to right. We're more like 2% left to right, but not in the typical manner of um, up and down hill. Um, we're doing a modified turnaround area at the end, so we're asking on the cul-de-sac. The road is going to be a private way, um, so we're designating it. It's going to be maintained by a homeowners association, the town will have no responsibilities for this. So it's not a public use street, it's a private way. 
Uh, the planting strips, there is, when you guys are out there, you saw what he's already started doing with stone walls and, and, uh, and features. He's doing a very nice job. Um, so we're asking for a waiver from the additional plantings. Also the under drains, the road is built. Uh, the typical cross section, the, again, the road is already constructed um, and street related construction standards, um, crowning, curbing, 36 inches over the drain pipe and street trees, which goes back to the planting strip um, because the, the roadway is already constructed. Uh, we think that that covers the waivers that we need for this. Gentlemen, any questions? We walked out there the other day, Rick or Brian. Um, the only thing that I would like to see right on the, the subdivision plan is a, is a note that states that this way is for the three lots shown only and that if additional lots are proposed at any future date that the road will meet the full uh, subdivision uh, standards. Not a problem. Oh, and actually, Mr. Ellis, that reminded me that we do have the, the note of no dwellings on the east side of the proposed right of way as well. I, I, um, did, I did see that. Thank yep. you. Um, I guess the next thing, really, Henry, is, is the procedure to do this. Um, do we have to have a hold a public hearing? Do we have to advertise this? Uh, I, I don't, we don't have the answer to that. But we are, we are in, uh, you know, a continuation of a public hearing, so we can uh, continue it for um, one more month, and that will give, as as I discussed with a couple of you folks, that gives the opportunity to uh, have the uh, department chairs, um, such as you know DPW fire chief, to review the hammerhead turnaround and so forth, to review and. Uh, provide a um, endorsement of, of the plan as well. I think that's, that would be uh, appropriate for this particular project. Can I, can I bring something up? Uh, this is Josh Arruda. Go right ahead. Um, with the fire chief, I already have a um, building permit and under construction. So that's been, um, we're already in the process. So I don't understand why, uh, the fire chief would have to be involved if that's um, if we're already constructed. I, I think that you, uh, Josh, it's uh, Henry uh, Young. I would um, suggest to you that you would probably want that endorsement um, in your back pocket. Um, in that, you know, there's been a modification the to the hammerhead, and also, you know, you brought the water in, which is also important too. So, um, I think. Yeah, but it, he he didn't, yeah. Go ahead. He did endorse this on the common driveway. Right. Um, so nothing has really changed um, from the common driveway. Right. And I, I suspect they'll have the same reaction. It's just that with uh, subdivision, that was a common drive. This is a Form C subdivision. And it's pretty typical that we have um, department chairs, you know. Uh, we give them the courtesy of a review and comment. I don't expect the fire chief to change his mind. Yeah, because I do already have a uh, an approved permit. Yeah, yeah. Um, and there was no issue. That I'm just trying to. I, I don't see why we'd have to <clears throat> move it on to the next month. I, on, uh, typically, I'm, I'm going to step in here. We have asked both the fire chief and the police chief to comment on every single subdivision request that has gone through to him that has gone through this board and i wouldn't i wouldn't propose to change that at this time i understand you're reluctant to to put it back out there in front of the the police and fire chief but again that is something that we would normally do uh for every subdivision that goes through this board understood so um we're all set with that. Everybody, everybody set with that. I, I am. I mean, I don't. I don't have any particular problem with this. I mean, we've we've been talking about this for it seems like the last year, um, but you know, procedurally, uh, we do want to solicit comments on this subdivision uh, proposal, 
uh, and I would say that would mean continuing this to our next hearing in January. You folks all set with that? And whatever. Uh, can I speak before. real quick? Uh, just, I mean, I, I, this is George De Silva. I'm, I'm um, one of the people trying to construct on the on the property. Um, I mean, I was under the impression last we were going to vote on this last time, until um, uh, a Donna Donna Lopes made some kind of argument about issues, and you decided to put it off to go to the site and look at it you know, basically to, to see what she was talking about, make sure everything was okay. Uh, none of this was mentioned to us. We had a month to go to the fire chief, to go to the police, to do all these items. None of this was brought up to us. We were going to vote last time. The only reason, I, I, you can go back and look at the recording of the meeting. The only reason you didn't was because of the Donald Lopes issue. Now we're a month later, we had a meeting on site at site, everything was fine. Nobody mentioned to us we needed more approvals. These things have all been approved by police and fire, and now we need new approvals and we gotta go another month. Can't we vote on this? We, we did, sir. I, 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 I understand what you're saying, but this, at this point, is a new subdivision request. We are not talking Which about it, was, a it, was, it already was last time. No, sir. no, no, please, please. We're I, I, I'm really getting tired of going round and round on this. You know what we were acting on before was a common driveway. We do. This is not a common. This is not no, a I'm common sorry, driveway sir. proposal. Last time we addressed this is this is a, this is a subdivision a proposal. We have a yes. We have to go through the whole procedure for this newly proposed subdivision proposal. Excuse me, Rick, this was the same proposal as last meeting. Nothing's changed. You can we go back and look. We never had a subdivision yes, proposal we did. in front of us for okay. this, this particular subdivision proposal. We did not have this, it was discussed. Prior to this, the only proposal that was on our agenda was a common driveway proposal for three retreat lots. Okay. That's what we were acting on before. This is different. I'm, so you I know, nobody's gonna I understand me. the reasons why it's different, I'm but it done. is a different procedure to go through a subdivision uh, approval process. This is a form C. We had to have the stuff put on the plan for the waivers. So we, we made sure all those waivers were in favor of the project. Am I correct? Un understood. Jamie and John, right? Yep, waivers yes. are added on, uh, changes are made per the site law. Okay, yes. that's why we're doing what we're doing. I understand you want to get started. We, we're behind you 100%. We have to do this as a procedural thing. I hope you grin and bear with it. Do we have a date for the January meeting, sir? Uh, I don't have one. I'll have to get my calendar out. But uh, Brian, Rick, anything else you want all set here? No. no Henry? No. Uh, no, I would just commend um, uh, the developer and the owner for um, accommodating the requests uh, that were made, um, especially to the property owner of uh, map 16 lot 9A, who was concerned about development. And I think that, um, uh, this really meets that that need and request. So I, I want to just commend the developer for that. Thank you, Henry. Anything else that you um, foresee needing to be done um, for next month's approval? Sorry, I was just getting my calendar. I didn't hear you guys. Just, just put the note on that. Just put the note on the plan that uh, this subdivision road will only service three dwellings. Uh, Mr. Ellis, um, after the the note for the uh, note for the three lots uh, being serviced, uh, um, like you had stated, should we uh, should we submit my lives between now and after the fire chief? before the next meeting to, or should we still bring in paper plans? 
Um, I mean, there's there's a there's a uh, what is the next day meeting? appeal period after after an approval. So I don't really you can bring the mylar's in if you want, but we will not be able to sign them that night. Oh no, we understand. Yep. Okay. Okay. Thanks. Henry, when's that next Tuesday meeting you have with the, all of them? Is it next Tuesday or the week afterwards? Do you know? Uh, let's see. I'm trying to set up a meeting for next Thursday. You mean department chair meeting? Yes, sir. Yep. So I could, um, I could invite them in for that and do a quick review and then we can get um, a quick responses back to um, Zenith and the developer. Okay, next Thursday is Christmas Eve. You sure you're going to get those guys to do it? I think uh, we'll probably pick the next Thursday. That's okay. New Year's Eve. That's New Year's Eve. We'll all be drunk. <laughs> <laughs> a great time. Uh, How about can we check they, they, like to you know, they, the 22nd? They might, they might be. Uh, they might move it to a Tuesday. I'll just. I talk to uh, Zenith about every other day. It seems so. Uh, whenever we establish. Uh, our next department chair meeting. I'll let you know what the date is and bring you in. We appreciate that. Okay, okay guys, you've, I'm trying to jack it closer. Okay, John, you yes. happy? Jamie? What's that? We're happy. Okay, Miss, Mr. Ruder and your gang, you happy? I know you're not happy, but are you satisfied? Yeah, I, you know, uh, as long as we can uh, move forward, as long as we get the, um, the acceptance from uh, Mr. Gallagher and the um, Police chief, um, if that's all we, that's needed, um, I don't see any issue. Okay, date for the next meeting. Uh, the seventh too soon. Yeah, we've uh, got to do we have to do public. Um, I've got to do newspaper uh, advertisements for a public hearing, so I'm going to need a couple weeks. So the twenty first or the twenty eighth? Uh, I'm looking at January. Is that the twenty third? The 20, January 2021, the 21st is on a Thursday, the 28th is on a Thursday. All right, I'll go with your schedule. That'd be fine though, whatever that is, that will... Uh, Either the 21st or the 28th, Henry, correct? Yeah, let's do the... Um, let's see, I'm just counting weeks for advertisement. Uh, let, let's do the 28th. Okay, my only challenge is that I will be in Florida. If the, I don't want to mess you guys up. Can you squeeze it the 21st? I think I can do that. I hate to push it, but I don't want to mess these yeah, yeah, guys yeah. up. I already have a, my plans made. I can do it. I'll, I'll set up the newspaper um, advertisement tomorrow. Okay. Thank you very much. Everybody all set with this? Okay, the 21st, right? That's yes, correct. Thank you. Uh, Thanks, what's everybody. Time? Really appreciate it. Yeah, thanks. No, thank you guys. You've been patient. Uh, we were hoping to make it a Christmas present, but I guess it's going to have to be a New Year's present. Almost a Valentine's Day present. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thanks, everybody. Have a great night. Okay. Thank you, gentlemen. With that, moving right along. It being... 703, we have a 655 public hearing. Continuation, proposed commercial development, 158 Main Street, 166 Main Street, 17 Wing Road. New England Retail Development, LLC, applicant represented by Patrick McLaughlin, PE, Greenman Pedersen, Inc. Site plan review and approval required. This proposal is for a 42,000 square foot station and convenience store with a drive-through service within the business village district. Do we have anybody here from New England Retail Development? Henry, did we have to talk to somebody on this? I see a phone thing here. Is that someone yeah, trying to call us? Yeah, I got it. Um, this meeting was, you know, scheduled last month. 
uh, it's their responsibility to be here to make their to continue their presentation. I've received no uh, emails from uh, the developer asking for a continuation. So I would just, in their absence, I would recommend. Um, Let's just continue it to the continuation. Yeah. Otherwise, we have to re-advertise. Yeah. Let's move. Is there a motion for Mr. a continuation? Chairman, before you make a motion, Mr. Chairman, can I have, can I say something? Go ahead. For the record, Dave DeVignan, I represent the abutter across the street. And um, I want to point out to the board that effective December 1st, the governor signed uh, legislation that now starts the clock ticking on these projects. Everything was stayed for COVID during his emergency order, but effective December 1st, everything is ticking. So the clock's ticking. The fact that they didn't even show up or send a continuance letter, uh, they've, been, they've been basically, in my opinion, playing games here, continuing between the, the ZBA. In August, they sent the ZBA hearing that uh, they were complaining that the town took four months to have a public hearing. Here we are four months later, they just, everybody shows up for the meetings. They send their attorney and he, he submits a, uh, a continuance letter at the last minute. They were supposed to submit a traffic report based upon a letter submitted to the ZBA for the special permit back in May. We're sitting here seven, eight, nine months later, they haven't done anything. Um, they're, they're delaying it now. No, no disrespect, David. I just wanna want you to understand that they, we had sat down and talked to these people. They had changed a bunch of plans on this. And I don't know if it was a screw up because of the storm. I understand where you're coming from, but if we continue this, we are continuing it. This is a planning board continuing it. I understand you said it December 1st, but we are continuing this meeting. I understand, but I'm trying to point out the obvious is if you continue it to January 21st, which is fine. Um, one more continuance after that, they're gonna get a constructive approval of the site plan review for failure of the town to act on the project within a certain timeline. You have 90 days to act on the site plan review when it was submitted, that, that clock started ticking on December 1st. So I, I, um, I think I, legally, I, I don't mean to be disrespectful, but I, I think because of this situation, we stopped the clock at continuing with this public hearing. You no, know, you, you have the certain timeline, unless they grant you an extension of that timeline in writing, uh, that the clock is ticking. Well, we've always been verbal on our continuations. I don't mean to be disrespectful on it, but I know they changed a bunch of plans and they have a bunch of different things going on. Well, uh, it's all... Mark, Go ahead, Mark. Rick. Mark, the, if, the, if the application was December 1st and we've got how many days to act on it? 90 days? 90 days. Okay, so that's January 1st is 30 days. February, February March. March is 60 days. And, you know, March, we're into March. I don't see why we can't continue this till the 21st and still be within that time frame. The point is you need to send it to peer review for stormwater, um, uh, for traffic, mm -hmm. and they haven't submitted any information. With all, due, res with all due respect, Mr. DeVignan, I, I understand what you're saying. If they don't have it, then we'll just deny them. That's all. I mean, that's as simple as that. If they don't have the information that they said they would come up with or that we've requested, we will deny them. But we have plenty of time to do that. And we've got until March 1st to be within that 90-day uh, uh, time frame. Okay, well, everybody I would, else? I would make, I'm going to make a motion, Mark, that we continue this till uh, the 21st of January, uh, at whatever time you see fit. Uh, excuse me, can I, I hate, I know you want to move along. Uh, my name is Josh Roche, I'm the other rebutter. So obviously I have my concerns as well. I think Mr. Devinian brings up a good point. Uh, yes, we have 90 days, but w what about the peer review? Uh, I know you're saying that we'll just deny it, but is, is it there gonna be granted time for the town to do the, the appropriate review of, there's a lot that needs to be looked at with this project. You know, squeezing it in within a 90 day time frame would be a challenge. So uh, I think it's pretty disrespectful that the applicants are, don't even tell anybody 
that they're not showing and they just don't show up. We're, we're hearing that there's, there's new plans now, uh, you know, as, as, a, as a resident, uh, is, was there a meeting that we could have attended uh, regarding that them submitting the new plans or uh, are we, am I just missing some, some meetings that we weren't notified for or what, what's the process? It was the just, process just, is that they've got, we've got 90 days to act on their initial proposal. If they come in with something that's substantially different, then we'll have to decide whether they need to start all over again or not. Uh, I understand that. Be. And again, but, and but again it, I, I, I understand what you're saying, but they've got, they've got 90 days. I mean, from my end, I fully intend to give them the 90 days. If they don't have the information, if they haven't done what they said they would do, then they won't get an approval. It's as simple as that. Well, my question was, they spoke about new plans being developed. Uh, where was this conversation? Was it supposed to be a public conversation or is that something that typically goes in through, through the board with the applicant? I have, I, I'm just asking for, as for knowledge. Far, as far as I'm concerned, I haven't seen any new plans. And until they get that in front of us, I'm not gonna make a decision on what we're gonna do with it. If they're substantially different, I, I, most likely depending on what the rest of the board wants to do, that means a new, a new proposal or a new, uh, we're gonna start the procedure all over again. I okay, don't know, thank you. I, but I don't know, I haven't seen them. Mm -hmm. They haven't come in with anything. When they do, we'll, we will act on it. And if they don't come in with something within the 90 days, then they're gonna get a constructive disapproval. Okay, thank you, I appreciate that. There's a motion, is there a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Unanimously to continue this till January 21st. Next one, 715, public hearing, proposed ground mounted solar array off Gammons Road and Mattapoisett Road, known as a cushion assessor's map nine, lot 32, map 10, lots one, two, three, and one A, three A for BWC Mill Road, LLC, represented by Richard Rusio. Field Engineering, Mattapoisett, the applicant is seeking a special permit. Is anybody here from Field Engineering? Yes, uh, good evening, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Rich Riccio from Field Engineering. On behalf of the applicant, um, uh, I also have uh, Josh Laracy and Jackie Firsty from Blue Wave here as well. Um, uh, for, be, uh, they're the applicants. Before you continue, I have to, do I have to yep. read this public hearing in the newspaper, Henry? Yes, you do. Okay, in accordance with that, my mistake, folks, you gotta bear with me, it was a snow day today. <laughs> <laughs> this meeting is being held in accordance with chapter 41, section 81T, to consider the following petition. At 7.15 p.m. public hearing proposed ground mounted uh -huh. solar array off Gammons Road and Mattapoisett Road known as a Kushnet Assessor's Map 9, Lot 32, Map 10, Lot 1, 2, 3, and 1A, 3A for BWC uh, Field Engineering Mattapoisett Mass. Because of Corona's uh -huh. restrictions, documentation and maps may be seen by appointment with the town clerk's office 508-998-0215 during regular business hours. Pardon my tardiness for this, but you can continue on, Rich. Thank you. Hey, I'm gonna share my screen. Please do. I have a presentation plan. If the board recalls, this was um, a large um, solar array located actually off of Long Plain Road in Mattapoisett. Um, the, the property of the array itself is a number of vacant lots in a Kushnet, um, as shown on the plan here. We're looking at a just over six uh, megawatt DC solar array. Um, accessed uh, via an 18 foot wide uh, gravel access drive onto the property. Um, there's about 14,700 modules that'll be um, sit on a, a single access tracker 
uh, foundation system, which would allow the uh, the arrays to to follow the sun. Um, sorry, allow the modules to follow the sun throughout the day, um, maximize the uh, the efficiency of the of the system. Uh, we have um, two sets of equipment pads to um, house the transformers and in inverters, and there's also a energy storage pad for an energy storage container um, proposed on the site as well. Um, we, the site is currently wooded, which will be um, converted to uh, a meadow type um, ground cover. Inherent in that um, change in ground cover, we, we have um, uh, increase in runoff that needs to be attenuated. Uh, with that, we've proposed two detention areas on the plan as shown one on the easterly side and one on the westerly side of the array, which will serve to um, attenuate and uh, reduce the, the rates of runoff to the, to the wetland systems. Um, one of the questions we, we, that did come up at the previous, uh, at our preliminary hearing was with regards to the closest actual um, house to this project. Um, there, is, there are two houses off the screen to the north about five to 600 feet away from the fence line that's shown here. Um, we will be going to the uh, Kushnick Conservation Commission for buffer zone work associated with the array and also the Mattapoiset Conservation Commission for approval on the, the access drive. Um, the site itself will be tied into the existing um, Eversource infrastructure in Long Plain Road. There'll be um, five, uh, no, six to seven utility poles along the access drive, both uh, customer owned poles and poles that would be owned by the utility company. Um, the, the applicants are working with, with Eversource now on the, the finer details of that interconnection. Um, on the site itself, there's a seven foot high chain link fence that's gonna surround the property, um, surround the array. It's about 24 acres enclosed within the fence. We are providing at least a 20 foot minimum clear access aisle around the array. Um, and the, um, the, the gravel access drive is being proposed to, to the equipment panels as is typically done um, for these projects. There's also a, a number of gates on the prop on the on, on the fence line to allow access for maintenance of the stormwater um, facilities and also emergency access. Those uh, those gates will be act, um, uh, equipped with Knox boxes for to allow the you know fire access onto the site if necessary. Um, that's a basic summary of the project. Um, our submittal, we did include a, a decommissioning plan and operation and maintenance plan as well um, that would um, would go along with the project. So with that, I take any questions that the board may have. Gentlemen on the board, any questions? Henry, you got anything for this gentleman? Yes, Rich, um, did you ha have the opportunity to speak to Chief Gallagher, the fire chief, about this uh, proposal? Yeah, we did have preliminary conversations with regards to the width of the access road. Okay. I don't know if you know, re originally we had talked about um, coming through the wetland with the 12 foot wide width, um, but at, at current time, um, we're, we're, we're gonna be able to provide the 18 foot width through the wetland there. Um, with the turnarounds as shown on the on the um, on the plan, uh, he he did um, comment just to, to make sure we provide you know adequate access to the facility, and um, that he would be working with the town of Mattapoiset on you know addressing any issues on the site um, once once it's once it's up and running considering the fact that the, the frontage or the, uh, the access is coming off the Mattapoiset, um, on the Mattapoiset roadway. Right, did he, um, is there water on this site or, because sometimes the chief, if there's not water on the site, there, um, then yeah, he would want that, some that kind of a water up. storage facility. That did, that did come up and he's, there, there's a hydrant 
um, on Long Plain Road, where my where my cursor is right now, at the intersection of Long Plain and Wolf Island, which he felt would be sufficient for for water access. Um, that did come up in the emails. Um, I'll, I'll forward that to the board for uh, for their for their um, you know for the file. I will need that. Mm -hmm. uh, for the board, I think that we can anticipate there won't be a substantial change to the plan. Uh, so I will uh, work with Rich to get the um, um, estimate from SW Cole on decommissioning. Uh, Rich has already put together a decommissioning plan, so that's kind of helps facilitate the process and moves along a little bit more quickly. Gentlemen, any other questions? Brian or Rick? No, I'm all set. Oh, I'm good. Do we have to make a vote on this tonight? We have this, this is a presentation. Uh, I would uh, like to have the estimate in place. We'll need that for the special permit, which we'll, we will approve um, in January. Okay. We so I, would, I would request that we continue this to January. Okay, I'll make a motion we continue this till January 21st. And um, hopefully by that time we'll have the decommissioning uh, plan and amount uh, approved by SW4. I second. 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 All in favor? Aye. 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 Unanimous. With that, Rick, you can set up some time with Henry or the fire chief to get all that stuff straightened out. Is that okay, sir? Yes, uh, not a problem at all. Um, and we just, you know, just, you know, just send me an email um, if you, for what you need from us. Sounds good. I'll call you tomorrow. All right. Sounds good. Thank, Thank you, everyone. You. Well, Thank you. We will continue this meeting on January 21st. Sounds good. Um, happy holidays to you all. Enjoy the, the holiday season, I guess. <laughs> Thank, you. Thank you. Thank you, board. Sorry about that. Uh, what do we have here? We have to come out of public hearing. Okay, is there a motion to come out of public hearing and go back into the regular meeting? Motion, motion, motion uh, so moved. Go to a regular meeting. All in favor? Aye. Unanimous. It being 722, we can go to the 730 meeting. Proposed ground mounted solar array, five megawatt located at 52 Morrison's Lane, known as a Kushnet Assessor's Map 17, lot 24, lot 24B and 24C. A Baragio Solar Systems represented by Brandon Smith P of Baragio Solar Systems Inc, low mass. The application applicant is seeking a public hearing for special permit. Mr. Smith, are you around, sir? I am. Good, good evening. How's the, how's the snow up in Lowell? You get buried? Yep, yep. <laughs> Quite a bit. 18, 24 inches, something around there. God bless you. <laughs> With that, lucky thing you didn't have to drive down. I know, it's, it is great. We were able to do this still. Right ahead, Brandon, go, go for it. All right, great. Um, if you wouldn't mind, would it be possible for me to share my screen? Absolutely. All right. All right, so this project is, as you mentioned, a uh, five megawatt AC uh, solar and energy storage system uh, proposed off of Morse's Lane. Uh, you can see here, I have a, the aerial map up. Um, so we're north of New Bedford, east of Route 140 in this, this area here, this wooded section. Um, Morse's Lane runs north here. Um, and the project area is in this, this wooded area that you'll see on the screen here. I'm gonna switch over to a uh, plan showing the proposed system on the aerial. Uh, this, so this system is, uh, it's located on this parcel, it's a wooded site at the moment. Uh, it's approximately 30 acres within the uh, perimeter 
uh, fence, which is consists of a chain link fence, seven foot chain link fence with a six inch wildlife gap on the bottom. Uh, this is actually the second site that I've permitted with the town of Cushion, and the first one being Mendel, as I'm sure the board will remember. So tried to incorporate all the requests um, from the, you know, from Chief Gallagher and uh, the board and, and the Conservation Commission into this layout. Um, so we're hoping that this is uh, kind of a, a layout that that works with within the town. So part of that we've incorporated in this layout a, a perimeter access lane, um, very similar to what was requested by Chief Gallagher on the Mendel Road project. So that uh, that will provide access throughout the site. Uh, there are two, as you'll, you'll see, the site has been delineated for wetlands and uh, there's wetlands in central to the, to the site, which kind of splits up the system into two sections. They are connected electro electrically, so um, it is treated as one system, but uh, kind of two separate areas. We do also have two uh, equipment pads, you'll see a, a Northwest one here, I highlighted the energy storage components in this light blue here. So there's uh, two equipment pads, a southeast one with electrical, uh, I'm sorry, with energy storage as well. Uh, the modules that we're using, so this is unlike the, the project you just heard, this is a fixed tilt uh, array. So the modules we'll be using are TerraSmart, uh, augered screw foundations. Um, the access to the site will be, uh, very, again, very similar to the projects you've seen, uh, a gravel access road give, providing access to the equipment pads and then that kind of um, earth, compacted earth perimeter road around the site for, the, for access um, you know, to the various arrays and whatnot. Again, um, Similar, this site also has tree clearing as part of it, which because of the change in cover type uh, will require stormwater remediation or attenuation. We have incorporated that into this plan as well. We have uh, roadside swales proposed, uh, which brings stormwater to a, a, a basin on the southeast corner of the site. Connection to the grid will this blue line that I've highlighted here is uh, our underground MV trench that will run south of the array down closer to Morse's Lane. Uh, it'll come above ground here where there'll be seven utility poles with the various uh, system equipment and utility equipment and then interconnected on Morse's Lane uh, here. Uh, other than that, I have reached out to Chief Gallagher um, and we, I have not had a, uh, um, a review meeting with him yet, but I have provided him with the plans. Um, we ha are going in front of the Conservation Commission next week because of some buffer zone work on the site as well, but you know, no, there's no wetland or um, actual wetland resource work here, just, just buffer, uh, buffer work. Uh, other than that, I, I'd like to request a public hearing for January and I'm happy to answer any other questions the board may have. Gentlemen on the board, do you have any questions? Where, where what town street do you use to get to this place? What's the route to get to those arrays in the back? So it would be, so Morse's Lane is off of Middle Road here. So I think middle road is, uh, you know, more through, through way. Does that answer your question? Well, no, I mean, so you're, in order to, for the fire truck to get to those arrays, they're going to drive to the end of Morse's Lane and then follow a driveway from there in? Yes, actually, I, I'm sorry. I, yeah, I didn't touch on that um, as much as I should have. So the access, there is actually currently an existing drive um, or an existing driveway that runs from from Morse's Lane up basically to here. This is the terminus of the of the existing road 
or driveway. Um, they this plan like a couple of years ago, something like that, or a year ago. Yeah, it's fairly new. Yeah. This is the end of Morris's Lane, correct? That is correct, yep. This is the one that had the garage out in front, and they had to cut the garage, and there was all these, uh, I remember this now. Okay. Yeah, there was, there was some discussion about taking one building down, and yeah. I, right, and they wanted improvements done in the road and all that stuff. Yeah. Okay. That, yep, yep. So that road's now in, it's a really, uh, it's really nicely done, um, wide plenty of access there. Um, so we're utilizing that for access. And then, you know, here, kind of at the corner of the property, this is where additional work will be um, added to kind of continue that, that access road to the solar array area. Okay, so this, does this, the same person that owns that quote, newly constructed, I'll call it driveway for lack of a better word, does, is that owner the same as the, the owner of the parcel back there? Or do you have to have some kind of easement or access agreement uh, across another parcel to get to those arrays? It's all owned by the, the same landowner. Okay. And Gentlemen, any other questions? That's, that's pretty much it. Brian? Mind. Henry, familiar with this area. We just need to uh, approve uh, a public hearing for next month. Is there a motion to approve the public hearing for this solar array on January twenty first, twenty twenty one? Is there a motion? A uh, motion to schedule a public hearing for January twenty first, twenty twenty one, for this solar array project. I second that. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Aye, unanimous. With that, Henry, you can get to Brandon on the time and everything. You'd have to post this in the paper, is that correct? Yes, uh, Brandon, we're gonna have to schedule this um, in short order, so I'll be talking to you tomorrow. Sounds good, and I'll, uh, yep, I'll uh, reach out to you if I don't hear from you. Okay. I appreciate it. Thanks. Thanks for the time tonight. Good luck with your snow shoveling. <laughs> thank you. You too. With Bye. that, uh, thank you very much. Our next 745 meeting is an A&R for two lots at 35 and 37 Wood Duck Road for Scott Raymond, applicant represented by Daniel Giosi of SciTech Incorporated, Dartmouth, Mass. We might be a little early. Are you folks on? I am on, yes. Fantastic. Please introduce yourself and tell us who you are and what you'd like to do, sir. Uh, good evening, Courtney Harris from SciTech. I work with Dan um, here to present the approval not required plan for Wood Duck Road. Uh, essentially, we have two uh, conforming lots doing a uh, little transfer of land. It's not going to cause either of the lots to uh, to change conformity at all. So. It's more of a, just a bookkeeping process to, uh, to get our client a little more of a side yard. You're like asking me to go out. We'd like I can share the plan, but it's, there's really not much to it. It's a small uh, triangle, triangular piece of land labeled parcel A on the plans if you have them in front of you. Um, it's about a little under 4,000 square feet. So that's just going from uh, one neighbor to the next. It's a side yard, essentially just creating a, a side yard offset. You're just moving a lot line, right? Pardon me? You're just moving a lot line? Just moving that lot line, yes. Brian and Rick, you have that in your packet. I, I, do, I do have the plan. Yeah, I have it. It looks pretty straightforward to me. I mean, there's no new building lots being created. There's two existing dwellings on each of those lots right now. And as the uh, proponent suggested, there's just a small triangle uh, that's going to change hands so that one person gets a little bigger side yard. I guess they want tennis courts or something. <laughs> just, <laughs> I'm just, just kidding. <laughs> Gentlemen, any other questions? No. Is there a motion? I make a motion we approve the plan as submitted. 
Is there a second? I second that. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Unanimously. With that, I believe the mylar is in the office, Henry. It is, and you have sole signatory uh, authority, so you can go ahead and sign that. I will take care of that tomorrow. Excellent. Thank you all so very much. You're welcome. Have a very Merry Christmas and a healthy and happy New Year to you all. Same to you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. With that, how are we doing today? We're doing pretty good. 734, we have an 8 o'clock meeting and proposed ground mounted array 14 to 47 Park Drive without me going through everything else. These people have asked for a continuation, Henry, is that correct? Well, right, it's not, it's not quite a continuation, but they were unable to make it tonight, so we're rescheduling them for the January meeting. Do you want me to read everything on this for the people out in TV land, or we'll just continue it? Um, I, I think, yeah, go ahead and read it for the record, and know that um, for the record, that's gonna be rescheduled for the January 21st meeting. Proposed ground mounted array at 14 to 47 Park Drive. Sincar or Park Drive LLC of New York. Applicant represented by applicants, engineer Weston and Sampson of Reading, Mass. This proposal is for a five megawatt AC ground mounted solar array. The applicant is seeking public hearing for a special permit. Thank you. With that, this is continued till January 21st. Is there a motion? Motion to continue to January 21st. Is there a second? Second, second Brian? Yep, second. All in favor? Aye. Aye, unanimous. With that, we're running a little early. Uh, I don't know if the people are A and R. Excuse me, A and R for a six lot plan at 301 Perry Hill Road for Mark Francois, applicant represented by David DeVignan, PE, Schneider DeVignan, and Leon Inc., Mattapoisett, Mass. This plan is located on an established ancient way, which predates subdivision control regulations. The way is a gravel roadway of variable width between 14 to 20 feet and currently services three homes. I guess you're, are you out there, David? Uh, yes, I am, Mr. Chairman. Okay, if you wanna uh, say a little dissertation on this, I know we have some uh, other factors we have to bring on on this. Uh, sure thing, Mr. Chairman. Thank you for the record, Dave DeVigna from Schneider DeVigna Leone. Um, here with me this evening is attorney Richard Burke um, and Marc Francois, our client. Uh, our last meeting, we, we requested the board uh, vote to allow us to develop the six lots under the A&R process, uh, provided that we, we provide the board with a, um, a roadway improvement plan and, and vet that through the town uh, departments, uh, which we would still intend to do. Uh, we continue the meeting so that we could do an, an on-site walkabout, if you will, which we did with the three board members and town planner Henry Young. Um, so that brings us back here uh, circling right back to this evening. Uh, one thing that was mentioned on the on-site is for us to uh, discuss the matter with Jim Merritt, see if he had any issues. Um, I would turn it over to Richard Burke, who, who did that uh, back and forth with, uh, with Jim Merritt himself. Uh, so I'd turn it over to Richard at this point. Thank you. Thank you, Dave. Um, this is Richard Burke. Um, I did um, uh, speak with Jim Merritt and we forwarded to him the same two letters, one from uh, myself and one from attorney Peter Paul concerning issues of uh, access and various deeded rights to improve the road and use the road uh, that's there. Um, I know that uh, when I last talked to Mr. Merritt, he was uh, reaching out to the planning board. I, I don't know uh, if there were communications uh, from there, but we did share with him the same information that we, uh, we gave the planning board. And did he give you any answers or anything in writing, sir? Uh, no, he, when I last talked with him, he was, um, he was reaching out to, I think, um, you, Mr. Chairman, and, and to um, Mr. Young to, um, he seemed to be unclear as to why he was even um, 
getting involved in the process. So um, that was where we left off. Okay, with that, uh, we have a, a letter from a Mark to shame. So you out there, Mark? Yes, I am, Mr. Chairman. If you, without me reading this whole letter, would you like to make a little dissertation or do you want me to read the whole letter? Oh, no, no, that was for informational purposes. Um, uh, Mr. Chairman, I represent uh, Dean Francois, who is the owner of the property abutting um, Mark Francois, his brother. Um, the essence of our argument is that while the it is being posted as an ancient way. We dispute that assertion that it's an ancient way that can be used for development purposes. Um, I have spoken with attorney Burke yesterday when I found out from Mr. Devignan that he uh, was representing uh, Marc Francois. Um, my research with respect to the ancient way came as of yesterday, there's an, uh, an allusion to it in my, my letter to the board. Um, in, in the letter to the board, I addressed the fact that um, the first recorded right of way was in a deed in 1988 in which uh, Claire Tripp granted to uh, Otis Tripp a right to pass and repass from Perry Hill to the home that he had in the back. And that was taken primarily because the parcel in total since 1856 was owned in the Tripp family and had descended. And at this point in time, they were segmenting the lots. The North lot was going to Otis Tripp, the Southerly lot going to um, uh, Frederick, Frederick Tripp so that the house set forth about 1,000 to 1,100 feet back was not to be landlocked. It was an easement that was created in 1988. There's an allusion in Mr. Uh, statement in Mr. Um, Burke's letter to the board that this is evidence of the um, a, 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 a public way, a, a right to pass and repass generally. Um, my research focused yesterday in uh, on the issue of, because I noticed it was po posted as an ancient way. Um, while the petitioner alludes to the 1871 plan of a cushionet and the 1895 plan of a cushionet as being dispositive because there is a, uh, a, a solid line going out to the, to the property and in fact a house when it's examined in the um, Leventhal collection at the Boston Public Library, there is an 1855 plan, which I shared with Mr. Burke, um, which is when the town of Akushnet was the village of Fairhaven. And this clearly sets forth um, a dotted line going to a home belong to A Hill. Um, it's a dotted line. Um, it's set back about 1,200 feet from what ostensibly is, uh, I don't know what it was known as in 1855. It does show uh, Mr. Perry living on abutting the property, but it is a, a dash line leading squarely to a residence. Um, 1855, this was nothing more than a laneway to a provide a person access from a home that was set forth approximately 1100 feet in the woods to access the public way. We would call it, we call it a laneway probably in 1855. In 2020, we'd probably call it a driveway. Um, Mr. Macedo, who is the successor in interest to Otis Tripp, is the individual who has benefited by this right away or easement to pass and repass from his property. There is nowhere in, in the record, in fact, in 2011, in a statement from your uh, town planner, Mr. Young, he 
there was a a rather um, there was a, 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 a there was a letter submitted by John Bentley now passed so I won't disparage him but it was somewhat slighted slanted opinion that said I can't make copies of this I can't make copies of that um, these copies were readily available there is nothing in the record title from 18 uh, 55 or 1836 uh, to 18, uh, 1988 that sets forth a right of way. Um, from 1836 to 1855 when the trips acquired all the land and forward in time, it is, it's nothing more than a laneway. There's nothing that confers it the status of an ancient way. In fact, Mr. Mr. Bentley sent a letter to Jonathan Eichmann, your counsel, and um, in Mr. Um, Young's report of November 17, 2011, he says that uh, town council has not offered an opinion on whether the town council is right as a matter of law as far as the ancient way. I've suggested to Mr. Burke and I would suggest to this board that this, this, this is not an ancient way. Uh, and I cited to Mr. Burke a case uh, called Fenn versus Middleborough, the leading case that talks about ancient ways and how town ways and public ways are set forth. And in that case, it clearly delineates that uh, an ancient way is something that basically predates 1846. Uh, here we have a plan in the Leventhal collection at the Boston Public Library that clearly shows a dotted line, a laneway, a driveway, uh, whatever you want to call it. Um, the only mm -hmm. codification is set forth in the deed of um, Claire. She, she calls it a private way it is nothing, a private way, a right of way. It's nothing but an easement, as I set forth in my letter to the board, that benefits a party and burdens uh, parties. In this case, in 1988, she created an easement in favor of Otis Tripp and his successors and assigns. No more, no less. The successor and assigned to um, Otis Tripp in 2020 is Anton Macedo, who has constructed a house out there and has animals and who passes and repass, and we live with that. Um, the right of way as it extends is about approximately 550 feet on my client's property, then it curves into Mac Francois's property and leads out to the Macedo house which is probably approximately located where is in the 1855 and the 1871 plans. Um, Mark Francois can do whatever he wants on his property, but he cannot bind and he cannot use the right of way that's in favor of one person, Mr. Macedo, uh, and on my client's land to develop it into a 30 foot right of way to service a six lot um, uh, subdevelopment, or a &R, if you will. I think that an a &R process is uh, incorrect here is this is not an ancient way. And further, it's not an ancient way for a form C. Uh, in my letter, I did not know, uh, we had made contact with the town planner in an attempt to get the plan uh, or the submission uh, of the a &R application I'm led to believe from Mr. Burke that this is purely for presentation purposes and there has been no Form A plan actually filed. Um, but uh, as set forth in my letter, which I will, um, I'll supplement with respect to the ancient way, um, uh, it's improper uh, as this is a right of way that only benefits one person, uh, Mr. Macedo. It's not an ancient way. Could I briefly, briefly respond to that, Mr. Chairman? You certainly may, sir. Thank you. 
So um, I've talked with Attorney Deshays, and and I stand by my my earlier opinion, as does Attorney Peter Paul, that there is a right to use and improve this this existing way. Um, it is shown as a, as an ancient way on very old uh, town atlases back in 1895, 1871. Um, it's been used uh, and referred to, in fact, on a on a Form C plan that was dated in 2011, signed in 2012 by this board, recognizing the same way as an ancient way for the house at the end of the road um, as a Form C plan. It's also shown on two previous ANR plans. Uh, the first was in uh, 1994, when Marc and Dean Francois divided the property. And on that same uh, ANR plan is shown this very same right of way that Attorney Deshaies is now arguing doesn't really exist. It's been the only right of way that uh, Marc Francois has been using to access his property. And it was obviously the, the intended uh, access. Um, so, uh, for all of those reasons, um, we stand by our letters. We, we maintain that there is a right to access through this right of way. There is a right to, um, which I don't think attorney Deshaies challenges a right to, when you have a right of access, you have a right of improving the way as a matter of law. And, and so we feel that we have a legal right to improve it as well. Um, I, I think town council having seen uh, our letters was uh, and concurring and, and, and basically not disagreeing with any of the evidence that we provided. Thank you. You're welcome. With this, it seems to be a challenge among two brothers and I don't know where to go. I guess you two as lawyers will be fighting this out somewhere, is that correct? Well, I, I don't have an answer for you. I, I think we got it, Mark. I think we did get a we did get something from our town council that I think should be part of the record. Um, okay, Henry, you, you, you Henry, uh, you received something from town council relative to this, didn't you, Henry? Yeah, I'm um, muting myself. Yeah, there's you know the the correspondence on this parcel goes back a number of years. But as of late, the um, correspondence was uh, centered. It's the one that I sent to you uh, this afternoon. Yep, the, the email. Centers um, on, let me pull it up for a second. Henry, would you mind reading that back into the record? He's trying to get a hold of it, David, on his email. I, I'm, okay. I'm picking it up here. I'm, I have done a paraphrase of it at some point. So I can everybody hear me? Yeah. Yep. Okay. So I will paraphrase um, this a bit um, with respect to the property that we're talking about and the way that we are discussing. Um, as we discussed, the planning board previously determined that this was a private way in existence when the abutting land to the north was subdivided in 2012. Um, Council for Marc Francois had submitted uh, separate opinions to the planning board uh, to the effect that Mr. Francois possesses a legal right to use the private way to access his property from Perry Hill and to approve the road sufficient to provide access to a subdivision of the property he expects to propose. Uh, it was legal counsel's opinion. Um, they make out an adequate legal argument that Mr. Francois possesses a legal right to 
use and approve the private way as asserted, and the planning board can accept those opinions sufficient to settle the question for purposes of considering a subdivision of Lot 25B. Then council goes on to say that if Mr. Francois's brother or another withstanding wishes to contest that asserted right, they may pursue whatever legal remedies are available to them, which may include appealing the board's approval of a lot division plan conditioned upon such access. Having uh, received an adequate opinion from the applicant's legal counsel, um, uh, our counsel recommended that the uh, planning board uh, not attempt to further uh, to settle further disputes as to access rights as the board has no expertise or authority to do so. Everybody catch that? Yep. Now, yep. there was another part of that saying that they, they said that the proper, in their opinion, that the proper method to pursue this would be a Form C subdivision. That is correct. So the second part of the first uh, uh, attorney Eichmann uh, spoke to the right of access to the way. And then the second, essentially, you know, just to paraphrase, that um, the private way is not uh, essentially recommending that the board require the filing of the subdivision plan to accomplish the division, the lot division and necessary road improvements. That's what I'd sent to you, Rick. I think you yep. have that in front of you. Yep. I mean, that's, that's, what, that's what I read the town council is saying, that the proper mechanism here is a Form C subdivision, uh, if, you know, if it can be done at all. Uh, right. You know, the, just from a, from a layman's perspective, I mean, it, it seems that way back in the early or mid 1800s, that a property owner wanted to divide the, the, the parcel into two pieces one for himself and one for the, the other trip. And to accomplish that and make sure that the other trip, the one at the end of the road, uh, if you will, or the end of right of way, road, whatever, lane way, ancient way, whatever you want to call it, uh, you know, granted him the right to cross his own property to reach uh, the trip in the back. So the original purpose of this uh, lane way, ancient way, whatever, was to provide access to somebody to put a house up in the back, uh, which is what we have today. Uh, later on, the two brothers divided the land uh, in the front uh, and, you know, reserved whatever rights they had or whatever to provide access for, for those two lots. It would, I would say that those two lots had sufficient frontage on Perry Hill Road in of themselves. And, you know, however, the two brothers decided to uh, access both parcels, you know, that certainly was between them. Uh, I mean, what we have now is, is not a simple uh, access to, you know, one or two lots. We've got somebody proposing this as being a, a, or a, a way that can be construed as frontage for six or more, uh, you know, additional lots. And to that, end, town council said, this really is this should be the subject of a form C subdivision. And I, I certainly would concur with that. Uh, you know, it, and again, it, it may not be possible to do it and meet subdivision requirements. Uh, but that's, that's up to the proponent to figure out how to do it. That's all I have to say. I mean, I'm, I'm the town council. I think we should, I think we're, I think we're obligated to go with the mechanism that town council says we should go with, which is a form C subdivision. Any comments from anybody? Brian? I'm just, I, I agree with you 100%, Rick. If that, that's what town council says, form C, I don't know if it's between the two brothers to work it out or the challenges they have with each other. It's just town council says, in essence, this should be a form C, correct? That's, way, that's the way I read the communication. 
each of the, the counselors out there have any comments? David, any comments? Um, I guess my only comment is uh, uh, please place us on the agenda for possible preliminary subdivision plan to be submitted for January 21. No problem. Thank you. Henry, you'll get to David on the time and the place, the time for the uh, January 21st meeting. Yes, I just need a motion from the planning board to set that up. Is there a motion? I would make a motion that we set up a, a time on the 21st of January to review a proposed uh, preliminary subdivision plan uh, for the Perry Hill uh, Drive parcel. Um, I would I would ask that they come in with a complete list of all waivers that they're looking for at that time. Is there a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Unanimous. Henry will get to you, David, on the time, exact time for that meeting. Would anybody else like to say anything else at this time? No, thank you. No, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, gentlemen. Thank you. Merry Christmas and Happy New Year to you. And Same with you. that, with that uh, gentleman, I don't know if you had had the opportunity to read the minutes of November 12, 2020. I did. I would make a motion we approve the minutes as typed and submitted. I second that. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Unanimous. Uh, vouchers, I signed that one for SW Cole in South Coast Media. I have to return that to the office, Henry. Uh, yes, actually, you can just deliver that to Lisa. No problem. Thank you. Take that to Lisa. I'll do that tomorrow. Uh, anything else? Anybody else want to say anything? Mail, I don't have too much in mail. Just uh, hold on one second here. Uh, I, I just have a, a question for Henry. Go right uh, ahead. Uh, Henry, so what, I do find it a little disturbing that New England Farms didn't even grace us with a, a letter requesting extension or, or, or make their uh, desires known at this meeting. Do you have any idea what they're up to? None. I was surprised that they weren't uh, present tonight. I mean, I, I would, if, if they don't have anything on the 21st, I mean, I, I, <laughs> I, I think we should probably end it then, to be quite honest with you. That's yeah, I, I, would tend to, I would tend to agree. Yes. And, you know, I think, I think you want to, you know, Mr. DeVignan was making a good point about, you know, just keeping our eye on the, Birdie of constructive uh, approval. Oh, absolutely. And, and absolutely. I, I, I think that we can continue to January, but if they're not, you know, uh, present and with, you know, plan sets that we can um, review, then we should probably deny their request. Yeah, just that'd be my recommendation. Yeah, I, I would, I would tend to go along with that. Uh, there's no sense in stringing it out into February and they no. haven't gotten anything to us and we've got no time to review stuff. No, I, I okay. I'm, I'm all set. Anything else? Like Plan or update? You got anything special for us, Henry? That, that We've had a full night. <laughs> yep. Okay. Our next meeting will be January 21st, 2020 at 6.30 p.m. Henry, you will get to all those folks and give them a time and set up an agenda? Yes, I will. Say it again. It'll be 2021. <laughs> Hopefully it'll be a no wonderful new year. It better be. <laughs> if the chairman would so entertain a motion to end the, end the meeting, <laughs> I would make that motion. Is there a second? Man, do I second that. All in favor? Aye. 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 Merry Christmas, guys. We'll okay, see you. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. And happy new year.